Alright everybody, how's it going and welcome back to the channel and welcome back to another transfer latest as things get gearing up into pre-season. Obviously got the first game of the pre-season tour tomorrow morning, uh, UK time. But we're going to get stuck into some of the little bits of transfer news that have been coming, over, coming out over the last couple of days. There's not all that much, but there is a little couple of bits of updates. So we're going to jump straight into those right now. And we're going to kick things off with Sergei Milinkovic-Savic of Lazio. Now, obviously, we've been widely rumoured to be interested in Milinkovic-Savic for about the last 12, 18 months, with him being widely linked to being one of Jose Mourinho's main targets last summer when the World Cup was on. Uh, but that kind of interest seems to have died down and it's picked back up what with the, the, the uncertainty surrounding Paul Pogba's future given his comments earlier in the summer and then his agent's comments, Mino Raiola's, over the last week or so have kind of sparked the interest back up from United's point of view with Milinkovic-Savic and... It's said that in the last couple of days it's been reported by Damasio over in Italy, so a pretty reputable source, that United are continuing to work on a deal for Milinkovic, Savic, and are ready to offer around about €80 million. Euros. Now, the amount that Lazio value Milinkovic, Savic has varied quite wildly over the last week or so. No real surprise, considering United have made their interest known and the, the amount that Lazio wants almost doubled in price but it was up from around about 70 million euros which is around about 65 million quid last weekend to upwards of towards 100 million euros which is mind-boggling that it's varied that much just because United's name's been linked with him uh, but it's also said that United are only looking to pursue a deal for Milinkovic Savic if Paul Pog believes and it's not really difficult to see why I think Milinkovic Savic is is the obvious replacement for Paul Pogba, at least as far as how he plays the game and his defensive attributes. I'm not sure he can replicate what Paul Pogba can do further up the pitch, but defensively and the style of the way he plays the game is very, very Pogba, Pogba-esque. And he starts last season, even though he had a pretty, pretty below-par season by his own standards compared to last season, the previous season, 17-18, uh, uh, he still managed to put in some decent numbers. Uh, won 63.6% of his tackles per game and also won 7.1 duels per game as well, which is round about the same as what Pogba was winning last season for United. But, like I say, as far as going forward, with only five goals and three assists in the Serie A last season, it's not really replicating the goals and the creativity that Pogba was offering United last time out, even though everybody will lead you to believe that Paul Pogba was absolutely woeful last season, which is completely not the case. But, like I say, if Pogba does go, and we're going to get into that a bit later on, but if Pogba does go, Milinkovic Savic is, is blind in the obvious, the, the obvious replacement for Pogba, and it wouldn't surprise me if we do let Pogba go, that we target Sergei Milinkovic Savic, but I don't think anything will happen on that deal until Pogba's future is a little bit more concrete. And from Milinkovic Savic to Nikolai Milenkovic, don't worry, I got as confused as you guys. Uh, from Fiorentina, the 21 year old Serbian um, that had a really good season for La Viola last season, and it's been reported over the last couple of days that from Damasio again, he's been a busy bu bunny as uh, Damasio, that United made an attempt to bring Nikolai Milenkovic, who we were interested in about 18 months ago. We've made another approach at the start of this week to bring the 21 year old Serbian centre back to Old Trafford. Now, it's said that United were offering 40 million euros for the 21 year old and Fiorentina are looking for around about 50 million euros so there's not that much in it if we are genuinely interested it wouldn't surprise me if we're able to sort out a deal for him um, he's a different type of of centre back than we've already got in the club especially young centre backs when you think of the likes of Tuenzebe and Lindelof they're very much the ball playing centre halves very much in the even though they're not at that level at least not yet of of Rio Ferdinand, the ball playing, very good reader of the game. Um, but there's not the one thing they do lack, both of them, is a aerial presence 
their ability to just clear everything out of the out of the box with the with the use of the head. And that's what Milenkovic does offer, winning 3.2 aerial duels per game last season in the Serie A. He's also good on the floor as well, tackling, winning 1.2 tackles per game as well. He's not the greatest with the ball at his feet. He's not woeful by any stretch of the imagination, but he's not a ball-playing centre-half. He only managed 80% pass accuracy per game last season for Fiorentina, where a lot of the time he was shunted out to the right-back spot, isn't in a position he can fulfil as well. Although I think if he does come, he'll be primarily used as a centre-back. And if he does come in, we could see a little bit of partnership between him and, like I say, the likes of Victor Lindelof and Axel Tuanzebe. So I want to keep an eye on this one. And now on to Mario Lamina. Now, this broke earlier this week that United were, or at least the reports emerged this, this week, that United were had inquired about Lamina's availability from Southampton. Lamina, who hadn't got on the Southampton pre-season tours, very much fell out of favour with uh, Ralph Hasenhutl, the um, Southampton manager, and that he's that Southampton were kind of looking to get him off their books anyway this summer. Um, also, Southampton were looking to recoup the 18 million that they spent on him about two years ago with ourselves, Arsenal and Leicester City supposedly uh, interested in bringing the Gambonese to their club. And then Lamina came out and said that he wants to leave Southampton and he's made it clear and he's agreed with Ralph Hasenhutl that he will be moving on this summer and that United is his preferred destination. But then United's officials have come out and basically rubbish the reports saying that United are being used to kind of start a bidding war for Lamina. And I have to believe that that's, that's the case. It, it, everything comes across that that's exactly what it is and that United's name is just being used to start getting some more offers in. Uh, maybe Arsenal and Leicester are, are interested and the, the, neither of them made a, a first move yet on it and United are being used to kickstart those bids. Uh, it wouldn't be the first time and it certainly won't be the last uh, but that's exactly what it looks like to me because if he was to come into United, he would only surely come in as a squad player because he, he certainly hasn't got the quality to add to our first 11. And that's what we should be prioritising this summer is strengthening our first 11. We made that mistake last summer when we brought in the likes of Fred and Diogo Dallo that, oh, and, and Lee Grant, let's not forget Lee Grant. Um, but... That's the mistake we made last year. We only brought in squad players and we needed to bring in more first team players who can dislodge the, the players that aren't quite up to the level that we need them to be. And Lamina isn't going to do that. He's a squad player at best. He's got talent, he's got potential, but he's always had that potential and it's never really been realised. Either that, Whether that's down to injuries, whether that's down to just not being used to the Premier League and not suiting the style... Uh, but he, he just hasn't worked out for him at Southampton. And even last season, even though he averaged 86% passing accuracy, which is better than any other Southampton player in the Premier League last time out, he only really won 5.9 of his duels, which is far less than the likes of uh, Pogba and far, far less than the likes of Nemanja Matic. Uh, only completed 1.1 successful dribbles per game as well, which isn't really that great with him. That's one of his main strengths is driving forward with the ball, only completing 1.1 dribbles per game. It's a little bit uh, little bit below par, and only really winning 1.5 tackles per game as well. So even though he's a defensive-minded player, the stats that he got last season, at least on the defensive side of things, aren't really up to scratch if he's going to be coming in as a first-team player. So I don't think there's anything in this at all, and I think United are just being used to bulk up the price for Lamina and start the bidding war for Lamina if there is clubs interested in him. And now on to the outs and first up we have got Romelu Lukaku. He just keeps on rumbling on the Lukaku to Inter Milan saga with Damasio reporting this week that discussions had taken place between United and Inter officials and that Inter made a offer of a two-year loan with an obligation to buy which would mean £10 million for a loan fee, and then 30 million euro, oh sorry, 10 million euros 
uh, loan fee and then 30 million euros next summer and 30 million euros the summer after. Now, I'm sure we've heard this before. I'm sure this is the same stories that came out about a fortnight ago, really. And even then, it was a terrible, piss-poor attempt a offer for Romelu Lukaku. And like I've said, we're not DFS. We're not Argos. It's not buy now, pay later. It's not buy on credit. If you want the players, pony up the dough. And United have rightfully rejected that offer outright and have stated that their asking price is €83 million, Euros, which is around about £75 million. Pounds. So recouping a lot of the amount of money we spent on Lukaku about two years ago now. And uh, yeah, so even though the offer's been rightfully put in the bin by United, uh, is still reporting that both sides feel confident that a deal can still be structured correctly and a deal can still be done to take Lukaku to the San Siro. And you didn't think we'd be able to go through an entire transfer latest video without the latest on the Paul Pogba fiasco. Now obviously this stems back all the way to the start of the summer with Paul Pogba's comments whilst he was over in the Far East talking about how he might want a new challenge. Then obviously his little grunt, his little rancid little leprechaun of a agent Mino Raiola coming out and stoking the fires about talking about how Pogba wants to leave and that United are basically finished quite frankly. Um, but then there's also been some more developments this week with Ole Gunnar Solskjaer coming out in his first press conference over in Australia stating that he hasn't got any sort of problem with Paul Pogba and that Paul Pogba has been a, a model professional and that there's a bit of media agenda against Paul Pogba. And I do agree to an extent. I don't quite think that applies when your little employed rancid little leprechaun of an agent is coming out stating the sort of bollocks that Mino Raiola has done over the last week or so. But, that being said, Paul Pogba, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer also said that United don't have to sell in terms of Paul Pogba or Romelu Lukaku and that no bids had come in for either of them. Now, obviously, there might have been a bit of a development on the Lukaku side of things, but as far as Paul Pogba, I'm pretty sure there's not really been any sort of developments on that side of things. And then, a couple of days ago, ESPN came out and stated that whilst Paul Pogba did make those comments, he isn't actually looking for a way out of Manchester United, and he's more looking for reassurances that United are heading in the right direction, which I can understand if that's the truth. I can un I'm not sure how he'd know that, but I can understand uh, Paul Pogba wanting reassurances. He's 26 years of age. He's quite clearly our best or outfield player. He's the only genuine world-class outfield player that we actually have. Whether he's replicated that on a frequent enough basis is a different matter. But you can understand at 26 years of age, a World Cup winner where he starred for that France team last summer, he'd want to be winning things. He'd want to be fighting out for trophies, fighting out for league titles and what have you. I can understand that completely from his career point of view. But... At the same time, it all it all seems like they're reaching for something that I mean. It reminds me of, of the of the Wayne Rooney thing uh, back in 2010, where he basically came out and said that he wanted to go. He wanted a transfer request because he didn't think United were again heading in the right direction. Were signing the sort of players that to take the club forward, and um, he ended up getting a new contract out of it. Now, whether this ends up the same way, I'm not entirely sure. Um, it, it seems like the media are trying to connect those dots a little bit too much, in my opinion. But the the frank, the the baseline is, if, if a player doesn't want to be at United, we have to let them go. Now, I'm not saying we let them go for nothing, because or a cut price deal, because we are in... We, are, we do hold all the cards in terms of Pogba. And if a team wants to come in and does want to buy Paul Pogba, then we've got to... We've got to go by the market price. And if Harry Maguire is going for 90 million euros, Paul Pogba should be going for at least 140, 150 million. And there's no two ways about it. He has not been a flop at United by any stretch. And if a team does want to move on Paul Pogba from Old Trafford, then they're going to have to pay the money. It's as simple as that. And United need 
need to stick to their guns with Paul Pogba. Okay, so that's just a little bit of a quick run through of some of the little bits of updates to the transfer news. There's not been all that much, what with United being out now over in Australia working on fitness, uh, gearing up for their pre-season friendlies. And there's little bits of murmurings, but nothing really concrete enough for me to bring you other than the stuff that I've just said. Uh, but if there is any more developments, I'll be sure to bring you them on the channel. So if you've enjoyed this, bang a like on the video, hit that subscribe button, stick around on the channel. There's going to be more stuff now as the friendly start to kick off. I'm going to be doing previews, reviews, all the whole shebang. So keep it locked to the channel and I'll catch you guys next time. Thank you.